10 points on how to be noble, better Bereans. Practical, theological, attitudinal, 10 ways. Number one. Number one, I'll start with a very practical suggestion. Listen to the sermon with an open Bible. Listen to the sermon with an open Bible. People are scrambling, I had mine open right here, I promise. I know today it may be, uh, you know, on the screen, there's your Bible. I understand some of you, it's not in a language that's your first language. I know what it's like. Some of you, you got kids crawling all over you and you don't have any lap space left to open your Bible. So, no shame if you can't. But, but here's why I say this. You have no reason that you should do what I say, or Ben, or Jason, or anyone from this pulpit says, except in that we are directing you back to the Word of God. I don't have any authority outside of that. Now, hopefully, uh, your pastors are nice enough folks, and you know them, and, and you can see fruit in their lives, and so you have a reason to trust them and think this is somebody I can listen to. But ultimately, that's not the reason why you listen. Look, you cannot go through life just deciding that if some, uh, some chap or some lady is pretty nice and seems to, you know, have nice kids and seems really sincere, that you'll listen to whatever they say. There's a recipe for disaster. The only authority that we have is from this book. And the reason why you're going to want your Bibles open and why we have them in, in the pews, those things didn't come for free. We bought them so you can use them. You don't have one at home, feel free to take one. We know how to get more. It's so you can see in the sermon what's coming out of the Word of God. We don't want to build just a congregation of people who just... Yeah, well, the pastor said it, so it's good. No, the Word of God said it, and so it's good. Nehemiah 8.8 8 says, the leaders in Israel read from the book, from the law of God, clearly, and gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. That's what they did in the Old Testament, and that's essentially what preaching ought to be. You read from the book, you give the sense of it, so the people can understand the reading. That's why we believe so strongly in expositional preaching. That is, preaching that exposits the text, that shows you what comes out of here. Many of you will, will move on from this church someday because you'll graduate or you'll get another job and in a very transient area. You, you may move on and you may have to look for a new church. And I want to tell you, if you find a church where you can listen to the sermon week after week and not have to have your Bible open. That's not the church you want to go to. You want to go to a church where, okay, they're, they're showing you connections here in this book. They're looking at these words. They're looking at these sentences. You're not just taking some uh, smart person's word for it, but you are looking at the Scriptures because that is what makes preaching authoritative. So listen with your Bible open. Uh, when I speak different places, it, it always surprises me, and I have to restrain myself from kind of going into a, a rant like I just did. And uh, I'll go and I'll speak, and I read from the Scripture, and I don't hear any Bibles rustling or any, of, any screens glowing. I want to say, what, why? You, why would you listen to me? You don't know who I am. You don't know if what I'm going to say is, is true. You need to see it in this book. The best stuff in the best sermons ought to come from the text. Not just, well, you know what, that, know, what, know what that's preacher? I love that preacher because the best stuff every week is he always gets on a big riff about something or he tells a funny joke or he gives, he's, there's always one really good story about his kids. Now, I've probably done all, all of those things. But if that's the best, if that's the best stuff, that's what's, then it's not worth anything. It has to come from here and you need to see it in here. 